Today, something monumental happened in the world of open source and operating system development. It's the kind of moment that sends ripples through the tech landscape, particularly among developers, system administrators, and anyone who cares about the future of software infrastructure. The Linux kernel, the core of countless systems that power everything from smartphones to supercomputers, has made a fundamental change. Rust is now a permanent part of Linux. This is not experimental anymore. This is not tentative. This is permanent. And this decision marks a turning point in how we think about systems programming. To understand the full gravity of this announcement, we need to unpack what Linux is, what Rust is, why this integration matters, and what it means for the future of software development. So today we're going on a journey that touches on history, on programming language design, on security, and on the very way that software evolves over time. Let's start with the protagonists of our story. Linux, for over three decades, has been the backbone of the modern digital world. It was conceived by Linus Torvalds in 1991 and has grown into an ecosystem that powers the majority of web servers, cloud infrastructure, IoT devices, Android phones, and even space systems. Its strength stems from its performance, flexibility, modularity, and the massive collaborative community behind it. All of this work, historically, has been done almost exclusively in a language called CC, is efficient and gives developers fine-grained its control over how hardware is used. But that control comes at a price memory safety. In C, it's surprisingly easy and surprisingly common to make mistakes that lead to vulnerabilities like buffer overflows, use after free bugs, and other security holes that attackers love. These are subtle, pernicious problems that can turn into catastrophic exploits. For years, the Linux community, cautious, pragmatic, deeply technical, resisted adding support for different languages in the kernel. The reason was simple. The kernel must be fast, reliable, predictable, and portable. It runs on everything from powerful servers to tiny embedded devices. Any new language would have to meet extremely high criteria. Then along came Rust. Rust is a systems programming language first developed by Mozilla that takes many of the benefits of C and C++, like performance and low-level control. It pairs them with a powerful ownership model that eliminates entire categories of memory bugs at compile time. Rust guarantees memory safety without a garbage collector. That's rare. It accomplishes this through a system of ownership, borrowing, and lifetimes that enforce strict rules about how memory is accessed. These rules might seem burdensome at first, but the result is software that's both safer and easier to reason about. For years, Rust has gained popularity in areas ranging from web development to embedded systems, and its use in industry has skyrocketed, but the idea of using Rust inside the Linux kernel was once controversial. Critics questioned whether Rust was mature enough, whether the toolchain could integrate with the kernel build system, and whether the benefits were worth the complexity. Yet step by step, Month by month, Rust support in Linux grew. Developers built tooling, kernel maintainers reviewed patches, and Rust code began to appear as optional modules and drivers and subsystems. It wasn't yet mainstream, but it was promising. And now, after lots of careful work, testing, collaboration, and debate, the Linux community has decided that Rust isn't just a cool experiment anymore. It is now a first-class, permanent part of the Linux kernel. This is huge, and here's why. First, this decision acknowledges that Rust is no longer a fringe language. It's a mature tool trusted by major tech companies and an enthusiastic open source community. It recognizes that Rust's safety guarantees reduce a whole class of bugs that have historically been the root of critical security vulnerabilities in the kernel. Second, it opens the door for future generations of kernel development to be safer by default. Developers will be able to write drivers and modules in a language that prevents many errors before they ever run. That means fewer runtime crashes, reduced attack surface, and ultimately, more robust systems. Third, it signals a philosophical shift for Linux. The kernel has always evolved carefully. Features were added only after long discussion and rigorous review. Rust's acceptance isn't a rash decision, it is the result of years of community testing and iterative improvements. The Linux community values stability above all else. So, choosing Rust says something profound about how the ecosystem views safety as a priority. But what does this actually mean for developers? If you're a kernel developer today, Rust support being permanent means that you can confidently begin investing your time in writing Linux code in Rust. Not tomorrow, not tentatively, not on the side, but as a normal part of your workflow. Developers will start writing drivers in Rust because it helps catch bugs early, because it integrates smoothly with the build system, and because the kernel community now fully supports it. If you manage systems, servers, embedded fleets, edge devices, this means that over the coming years, more of the code running your hardware will be written in a language that aims to be more secure by design. That improves the quality of the software that runs everywhere you look. It's a long-term win. If you're someone learning operating systems, systems programming, or low-level development, 
This decision impacts what languages you might choose to study. Traditionally, learning C has been a rite of passage. Going forward, learning Rust will become equally if not more important for people wanting to work on modern systems. But with change comes questions. How quickly will Rust replace C in the kernel? A short answer, not fast. It won't be like flipping a switch and suddenly all of Linux is in Rust. Instead, Rust will grow incrementally. Certain subsystems, especially where memory safety is critical, or where drivers are routinely buggy, will be natural candidates. But the vast majority of the kernel will remain in C for many years to come. After all, C code already works, and rewriting code just for the sake of rewriting it is not typically a good idea. Another question is about compatibility. Rust code in the kernel must still interact seamlessly with existing C code. Thankfully, Rust was designed with interoperability in mind. It can call C functions and be called from C, which means Rust modules and C modules can live side by side without friction. And what about performance? Rust's abstractions are zero cost, which means that code written in Rust can be as fast or even faster than equivalency code. Rust gives you safety without sacrificing performance, which is exactly what systems programmers care about. In many cases, developers report that Rust code is easier to maintain and reason about without any measurable performance penalty. But perhaps the most important aspect of this announcement is what it symbolizes. It symbolizes a maturation of the software ecosystem. It shows that the open source community is willing to embrace tools that improve safety without compromising the principles that have made Linux great. It shows an understanding that security and stability are not optional, they are essential. This isn't just a win for Rust fans. It's a win for every user of Linux from hobbyists tinkering at home to enterprises running massive cloud infrastructure. And let's be honest, there are big implications outside of Linux as well. When the most widely used open source operating system kernel endorses a language that influences libraries, tools, compilers, and even how universities teach programming, Rust will see an expansion of real world use cases that could easily carry into other systems and platforms. So let's take a moment and reflect on how we got here. Rust's journey into the Linux kernel didn't happen overnight. It began with experiments, with small patches, with developers willing to try something unconventional. People like Miguel Oyeda, who helped advocate for Rust and Linux, and countless other contributors who built the compiler support. The bindings, the macros, the tooling, all of that groundwork was essential. It was slow, deliberate, and community-driven. That's how Linux development has always worked. Anyone can contribute, but contributions only get merged after rigorous review. Now, that effort culminates in something permanent not a trial or an opt-in experimental branch. Rust is here to stay in the kernel, and that means we're entering a new phase, a phase where memory safety isn't something you hope for, but something that uh, modern systems programming can actively enforce. In practical terms, what kind of code will we see first? Likely device drivers? These are notorious for bugs because they interact closely with hardware and often come from third-party sources. Rust's safety features make it easier to write Karai drivers because many classes of mistakes are impossible and safe. Rust. Imagine a world where common exploits like use after free vulnerabilities are dramatically reduced in drivers because the language itself prevents them. That future isn't hypothetical anymore. The kernel is moving toward it.